So E3 went like this. Before I do start, I just want to be clear. This is how I viewed E3 and what was really big and what was really disappointing. If you don't agree with, mo with what I say, you can leave a comment if there was anything you didn't agree with and I'll try to understand your viewpoint. <laughs> talking about Ubisoft. They were the first ones who started on E3, so the only reason I actually tried to watch the Ubisoft conference was because the Mario plus Rabbids game Sparks of Hope, I think is what it's called, got leaked a few hours before the actual presentation. The other stuff didn't really get to me. It was just mainly updates for their games. The only big thing I saw was for the Avatar game, but it was mainly a CGI trailer. In my personal opinion, I kind of started to lose a bit of interest in most CGI trailers because it mainly just shows you just the CGI in the world, but not like the actual gameplay. And I started to like feel that way when Paper Mario The Origami King was announced later last last year. I say this because games can always look groundbreaking, but if it doesn't control well, then you've lost my interest. So we'll have to see how Avatar takes this. Next up was Xbox and Bethesda. Starting it off, we got Starfield and like I said with Avatar, CGI, no gameplay. So well, I need more if I'm going to get excited for what I'm going to do. Sea of Thieves, on the other hand, I used to, I'm annoyed I never got to play because like, um, my sister's normally on the Xbox, but I'm definitely going to get it now on my computer because, oh my gosh, I was not ready to see Jack Sparrow in Sea of Thieves. So I am definitely going to check that out with friends when I have the chance. Every time I see an FPS reveal, or any shooting game for that matter, I think of how nice it would be to see a bit of variety. Stalker 2, Back for Blood, Fallout 76, The Ascent, Slime Rancher 2. I was very confused at this, and I'm not, I don't know what to think about this game at all. The two that definitely got me excited were Battlefield 2042, and of course, Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite thankfully does not look like a 360 game anymore, and the multiplayer looks insane. The best part was when you see this one guy grab a shotgun from from like the grappling hook. That was just I was not ready to see that. As well as the grappling hook to like get to one, onto one of the ships. Halo Infinite is definitely going to be a bigger multiplayer this year. Next, Square Enix. Square. 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 What happened? You have this Guardians of the Galaxy game, which I, I thought I was hyped for, but then I started to see gameplay, and this is not going to be ready in October, seriously. Th this, this needs a delay. I, if this comes in on October, then it might just be another Avengers game. And speaking of the Avengers, the, the Black Panther DLC, I'm definitely interested in, because you will all know my love for Black Panther. They were done with practically all the Marvel stuff, it just went downhill. It started to show the mobile games, no details for Final Fantasy Remake Part 2 or even Final Fantasy 16 for that matter. Instead, we just get this uh, Isekai game in Final Fantasy where this dude is just straight up saying chaos half the time. Capcom gave us something I never could have expected to, for them to give us. They gave us Marvel vs. Copium 2, New Age of Pain. Capcom practically had no games whatsoever. It was just updates for Monster Hunter, Ace Attorney, and sure, we got something for like Resident Evil 8, but they just showed us um, text saying that DLC is coming. Like we we expected DLC to come. They're not. There's no way they're gonna abandon the game. So it honestly felt like an Apple presentation where they're talking about the lack, the next feature for the iPhone update. And Namco was the last one to present at E3, even after Nintendo's presentation. So you can expect Bandai Namco to wait. I, wait, I forgot what happened. Hold on. Um, let me just quickly search. 
what did Capcom do for their presentation? Let's just talk about Nintendo, shall we? Nintendo's last presentation where they finally gave us a direct didn't really get me excited for much stuff, but this is where the redemption arc starts. Ash, of course, is the first thing to get off the bat, and my gosh, I was not ready to see Kazuya Mishima in Smash, or any fighting in character at all after we got Terry Bogard. Tekken is, if not, one of the hardest fighting games I've ever tried to master. But man, it's going to see how interesting all his moves are going to be implemented into this game. Especially um, when I saw his 10 hit combo, which is one of my favorite things to do in Tekken. I did get a bit worried with some of the games they talked about that were already shown for E3. Like the Square Enix stuff and the Ubisoft stuff, but luckily, we got Monkey. I called this one like crazy. I felt there was a reason for a random update in Mario Party where they finally gave us online. And yeah, we are getting it with Mario Party Superstars, which is pretty much Mario Party the Top 100, but better, and with online. I honestly somehow knew there wasn't going to be any Metroid Prime 4 news, primarily because I, when I actually checked the I checked the website for Retro Studios sometimes, and I actually saw that they're still trying to hire people, like concept artists, um, level one engineers, environment designers. So I honestly don't think we're gonna get uh, Metroid Prime 4 until like 2023. Thankfully, we got a new 2D Metroid, Metroid Dread is everything I loved about Metroid Samus Returns on the 3DS, and I am really happy to experience it now on the Switch. Starting to go a bit off the rails again with the stuff we already knew that was coming. Luckily, your boy Wario came in to fix that. WarioWare is a big time favorite. I always love the mini games and love how you always have to complete them in under 10 seconds. And I'm definitely looking forward to it, especially for the co-op that's being added into the game. Shin Megami Tensei 5. I didn't really know much about the series at the, when it was announced last year, except that it was made by the same people who made Persona. But I am definitely interested in this game, especially since in the third one I noticed they got Dante from Devil May Cry. I've never truly got to experience many of the Donkin Ramas at all now, but I'm definitely going to experience them now because I have, I have only watched the anime, so I am definitely going to check it out. Especially the Monopoly game that was that's like being added onto there, so that should be fun to check out. Now to end it, they they scared us a little by showing Age of Calamity DLC and. Of course, the a game and watch, which I do want to buy, of course. But everyone knew the one thing that we wanted to see ever since 2019, and that is the sequel to The Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. And did they show it? Yes. Yo, the world looks insane. His, his hand is now a Sheikah's, he got a flamethrower, he, he reverse time, the cast was corrupted, oh my gosh. Overall, Nintendo and Xbox both carried E3 this year, so that was a great E3 to see. I'll just say both carried E3, so I don't seem like I'm taking sides. I hope you guys enjoyed my overall review of E3, and I definitely want to do more like this if E3 comes back again next year, and hope you guys enjoyed this, and once again, be sure to get one of these, one of these coldest water bottles using my promo code GENGAME, which you can still get for a limited time, so hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will guys see you in the next video. But for real, Nintendo won! <laughs>